understand how it all began, we have to go back to an event about 600 million years ago, when humans and cephalopods, which includes octopuses, squid and cuttlefish, broke apart, when life was flourishing in the depths of the ocean. The exact appearance of our common ancestor remains unknown, but it likely resembled small, flattened worms. These creatures may have been only a few millimeters long, possibly a bit larger. They could have swam or crawled along the seafloor or even done both. They might have had simple eyes or at least patches sensitive to light on either side of their bodies. They had very simple nervous systems, potentially consisting of nerve nets throughout the body or even a small brain. These beings were the last shared ancestors of both humans and octopuses, as well as of mammals and cephalopods, before each group diverged on separate evolutionary paths. This ancestor lived at a time when no life had yet evolved to inhabit land, and the largest animals around may have been sponges and jellyfish. Cephalopods represent a unique case of cognitive sophistication in the realm of invertebrates. Because our most recent common ancestor was simple, and existed so long ago, cephalopods are an independent example of how nature evolved large brains, and with them, complex behaviors. If we can establish contact with cephalopods as sentient beings, it wouldn't be due to a shared evolutionary history or kinship, but because evolution independently developed advanced minds twice. This might be the closest we come to encountering an intelligent alien. Octopuses, along with other cephalopods, are mollusks part of a broad group that includes clams, oysters and snails. Therefore, the story of the octopus is also intertwined with the broader evolutionary journey of mollusks. As cephalopods evolved into their current forms, a significant change took place, some of them became smart. Initially, these animals developed large nervous systems, which included sizable brains. How large exactly? A common octopus has around 500 million neurons in its body. While this is quite impressive, humans have roughly 100 billion neurons. However, the octopus's neural count is on par with smaller mammals, such as dogs, and far surpasses that of other invertebrates. When attempting to compare brain power across species, we run into the fact that intelligence doesn't have a single, universally applicable scale. Different animals excel in different areas based on the unique demands of their environments. The comparison between cephalopods and mammals is especially difficult. Octopuses and other cephalopods have incredibly advanced eyes, similar to ours in structure. Two distinct evolutionary paths resulted in a similar way of seeing, but the nervous systems beneath these eyes are quite different. The brains of vertebrates, like birds, mammals and even fish, share a common architecture, allowing biologists to map one animal's brain onto another. But when comparing vertebrate brains to those of octopuses, this isn't possible. There's no direct correspondence between their brain parts and ours. Interestingly, octopuses don't even house most of their neurons in their brains. The majority are located in their arms. With all these differences, the best way to assess octopuses' intelligence is to observe what they can actually do. In a lab in New Zealand, one octopus developed a dislike for a particular staff member, for reasons unknown. Whenever this person walked past the tank, the octopus would shoot a jet of water at the back of her neck, about two liters at a time. A researcher from Dalhousie University studied a cuttlefish that consistently squirted water at any new visitors to the lab, but never at familiar people. In 2010, research showed that giant Pacific octopuses can also recognize individual humans, even when they are dressed identically. Though octopuses enjoy eating crabs in the wild, in the lab, they are often fed frozen shrimp or squid. While they initially resist these less than ideal foods, they eventually adapt. One day, while a researcher was feeding the octopuses a thawed squid, she noticed one octopus had not eaten its piece, instead it was holding it and watching her. As she returned down the row of tanks, the octopus slowly moved toward the outflow pipe, still watching her. Upon reaching the pipe, it dumped the squid scrap down the drain. A cephalopod's skin is a dynamic, layered screen controlled by the brain. Neurons extend from the brain into the skin, where they regulate muscles that control color changing sacs. When a cuttlefish senses or decides something, its color changes instantly. In terms of camouflage, octopuses are unmatched. They can become completely invisible to someone looking just a few feet away. 
This ability is enhanced by the fact that, unlike cuttlefish, octopuses have very few hard structures in their bodies, allowing them to take almost any shape. The primary evolutionary purpose of cephalopod color change is believed to be camouflage. As cephalopods lost their shells and began to navigate waters filled with predators, camouflage became a vital way for them to avoid being eaten. Camouflage works by producing colors that make the creature blend into its surroundings, unlike signaling, which is used to attract attention. In certain species, signaling evolved as a new function for the camouflage system. The mechanisms originally used for hiding were repurposed to communicate and convey messages. Colors and patterns began to be produced not to blend in, but to be seen by others, such as competitors or potential mates. Intermediate between camouflage and signaling are dimatic displays, which are dramatic patterns often used when escaping from a predator. These displays are thought to be a way to startle or confuse the predator, by suddenly changing appearance in a way that might cause the predator to hesitate or lose focus. In this case, the display is meant to be noticed, but it doesn't convey information. Its primary purpose is to disrupt or disorient the threat. During their mating season, Giant cuttlefish males perform ritualized displays that combine intricate skin patterns and body movements. This behavior is most vividly observed near Wayala, an industrial town on the southern coast of Australia, where thousands of giant cuttlefish gather each winter to mate and lay eggs in shallow waters. While the exact reason for their choice of location is unknown, it provides an excellent opportunity to witness the most dramatic forms of cephalopod signaling. Giant cuttlefish, like many cephalopods, have very short lifespans, typically only one or two years. The same is true for octopuses. The average lifespan is also just one or two years, with the giant Pacific octopus being an exception, reaching up to four years at most. Cephalopods are the only invertebrates that evolve large brains, unlike vertebrates. Many mammals, birds and fish live much longer than cephalopods, particularly larger species like dogs and chimpanzees. Some smaller species, such as certain monkeys and hummingbirds, can live for many years as well. Cephalopods seem unusually large and intelligent for creatures with such short lifespans, raising the question, what is all their brain power doing if an octopus dies within two years of hatching? Their large nervous systems are the result of the flexibility and mobility their bodies offer, as well as the need to hunt while constantly being hunted. Their brief lives, however, are a product of their vulnerability, which has shaped their lifespan. Mutations that have beneficial effects early in life, but detrimental effects later, tend to accumulate in cephalopod species, as natural selection favors traits that enhance survival and reproduction during their short lifetimes. This occurs not because the breakdown itself offers some hidden evolutionary advantage, but because it represents the cost of earlier evolutionary benefits. As organisms began interacting in increasingly complex ways, particularly as predator and prey, evolution continued to diversify. Some brains grew larger, leading to two distinct evolutionary paths for large nervous systems, one in vertebrates and the other in cephalopods. The mind first evolved in the sea, water made this possible. All early stages of life, including the origin of life, the emergence of animals, the development of nervous systems and brains, and the evolution of complex bodies took place in water. When animals eventually ventured onto land, they carried the essence of the sea with them. All vital processes of life occur within water-filled cells, which are enclosed by membranes, tiny containers that preserve remnants of the sea's properties. Encountering an octopus is, in many ways, the closest we are likely to come to meeting an intelligent alien. However, it's not truly alien. Both us and them are products of the Earth and its oceans.